What's up, everybody? It's your boy Chuck Diesel, the Lone Wolf. We in here once again for another episode of Sake Sundays. Special thank you to Sake High for sponsoring the show, providing the drinks. Go ahead and check out their website, sakehigh.com. You can order it to your front door. So if you want a little taste of Kyoto, Japan, right here in America, go to their site. And we also want to give a thank you to God's Favorite Jewels for providing this for our guests. Oh, thank you. Um, this is so cute. <laughs> a little bit of amethyst you now for people who like charms or crystals, yeah. jewelry. Uh, check out the site, God's Favorite Jewels. I'll tag them in my bio. And for the most important thing about today's show, tell the people who you are. Hi everyone, my name is Emily. I go by the stage name M-L-E and I'm a singer Do that again. Do that again. <laughs> M-L-E. I like that. Thank like you, that. thank you. Three <laughs> letters, singer songwriter from Orange County. All right, Orange County, what's it like out there? Yeah, it's awesome. There's really good food and good people. What's your favorite thing about being from Orange County? I'd say the food because I'm Vietnamese and there's a lot of good Viet food out there. Bro. And everyone, all my relatives from out of state, they always come to Orange County for the Viet food. Where? Yeah. See, that's uh, something I wish I knew when I lived there. Like, yeah. Also, to OC and I you have plenty of people food. here that can show you too. Actually, Andrew is a chef, so he could actually just chef it for real. Facts, facts. But I would try that. You gotta give me some restaurant recommendations. Yeah, I finally got the bracelet on. It matches my nails too. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, thank you. Do you like purple? I do. I don't have a purple bracelet yet, so this would oh. go nice. I oh. usually wear crystals, but I don't have them on the Oh, for real? Mm -hmm. Oh, what's your favorite one that you have? The one that my boyfriend got me. It's all rose quartz with all one right. black lava stone. And That's his dope. was all lava stone, one rose quartz. That's dope. Yeah. That's dope. Shout out to Maya Stones. I think it's time for a shot. Okay, I'll grab this one right here. So my first time trying sake. Like I said, this is vegan. Oh. It's sourced by a company here in Santa California. Monica. Yep, Santa Monica yeah. is women owned. Shout out the gals. And you can order it to your front door. All fifty states. Nice. Cheers. Sake Sundays. Ah. Mm. It's good, right? It's sweet, yeah. Yeah, it's super smooth. Mm -hmm. Like, drinking this is dangerous. What percentage is it? Uh, I think it's 15. I was about to say 13. There's Dang. 15 in this little can. Mm -hmm. It's like the first time I drank it by myself, I just poured a shot, but I poured two. And I was like, yo, mm. this isn't a joke. Like, yeah. It's not liquor, but if you drink it fast, it kind of hits like liquor. It's not? What is it? It's wine. Oh, okay. Yeah, sake is, is it wine. rice wine? Usually, yeah. <laughs> nice. Yeah, and we got some green tea right here. Oh, you said this is your first time Shout having sake? Yeah, no, of it course. Is. What's your favorite drink of choice? See, I don't drink. <laughs> yeah, I'll sip on all the tasty, lightweight stuff like Smirnoff ices. I like wine. If it's flavored, you know, that Moscato, that white rose wine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wine is cool. Wine is cool. Yeah. Uh, those the Smirnoff stuff and those <laughs> ice things. Yeah, they're yummy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you gotta chill on those. Facts. They, they be drink too stuff. much. Yeah, <laughs> they are. <laughs> but I guess I'll never drop one. I just had to tap out on it. Really? Oh, yeah. It's not the business. Mm -hmm. Oh, you're a singer, right? Mm hmm Do you ever? drink like when you're writing uh, feel like it, you get a different side of your artist um, no the only time i really would was with my boyfriend and our housemate jamal we'd sip on this word off ices but i smoke when i song right <laughs> smoke right. and song right you know mm -hmm. i feel it i feel it mm -hmm. what's one of your like favorite things that you wrote i honestly always say stress relief just because i feel like it's the most um, I feel like it's the most left on song of mine because it's like it's really slow, but I really, you know, put my emotions in that one. I meant every word and I don't get to perform it too often, so when I do, it means a lot. Oh, I hear you, I hear you. So, is it one of your favorite songs to perform? Um, no, I think it would be Visions because it's the most dancey song and people like it the most when I perform, but yeah. Oh, you said it's the most dancing. Do you personally like dance music? <laughs> I want to make more upbeat music because I tend to perform at venues like clubs and yeah. bars and places that 
need hype, but a lot of my songs are like smooth, sensual R&B music, so I need to start getting my um, portfolio more diverse out there. <laughs> yeah. But if you were going to just play something, would you, what would you go to play? Do you like more a beat? Do you like a mix? You're probably gonna say you like a mix. Yeah, I mostly play a lot of hip hop. Um, I'm usually the person that people are like, yeah, you get ox. They're like, yeah, you get Bluetooth. I'm like, okay. Or they're like asking me to send my playlist. So I try to kind of fit the vibe of whatever friend group or event it is. Yeah. No, it's always it's always a nice feeling to be the person assigned to ox. Yeah, and sometimes it can be stressful because I'm like, damn, I'm trying to vibe too, but I hear I gotta cue some songs up, you know. <laughs> Be a whole DJ. Like the pressure's on me, exactly. No, see, if ever that happens and people start saying, "What is this?" i be like, "I didn't ask for this job." I, <laughs> yeah, like here. You this is the playlist. Mm -hmm. I'll skip it, but if it happens more than twice, somebody else take it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um. I gotta put my phone on. Do not disturb. We're getting blown up. We got a little celebrity <laughs> in our presence. <laughs> oh, what social media platform do you like the most? Instagram. IG? Yeah. Why? Um, just because I, I take a lot of photos and that's where I get the most engagement, I'd say. Um, a lot of people are always like reacting to my posts and stuff. Uh, TikTok, you know, it's always a gamble. Like, I still can't figure that shit out. Have you ever had success on TikTok? Just in like the hundreds of thousands, never like millions. The hundred thousand is a lot. It's like, especially <laughs> it's if it's cloud. multiple times. A little micro influence. Like, 10 100Ks is a million. Back, back. <laughs> you put it that way. <laughs> What's your follow count? 3,000. 3,000? Yeah. How, How about you? you? You get a good amount of views on there. What's up, TikTok? Oh, what's good, TikTok? Oh, for me, TikTok has been coming in this too. Uh, no, yes, and no. Mm -hmm. If I had to pick a favorite platform right now, I probably would say IG, but that's just, I don't know, because I interact the most, like Same. posting on it yeah. and other stuff. But if I had to pick a favorite, I'd say YouTube. But is that social media? Like, I don't know. It's kind of turning into it, I think consider so. it, I feel like social media. So like, yeah. I spend more time on YouTube. Mm -hmm. I think I do, than anything else. But if I had to pick something to post on, I'm going to post the IG first just because it's what's first in my mind. Yeah, yeah. definitely. And TikTok was big for a second for me. And then now, you can say I'm on it, but it's not <laughs> the way I used to, I used to be on. <laughs> like, I used to be on. Back I'd in like quarantine up. and yeah. back when they had everyone on the show cold. I would wake up and I would shoot videos to schedule for later. Oh, good. You, know I mean? That's, like, you gotta be on your content creation stuff I, like I that, like, though. Like, about to, about to blow up, I wish I did that. Yeah, I should have. I, I kind of hopped on it late because everyone's all like, oh, TikTok, TikTok. And I'm like, like, I wasn't trying to hop on the hype yet. And then by the yeah. time I did, like, everyone was already blown up. You know what I mean? I was kind of late on it. <laughs> No, I hear you. I yeah. hear you. I feel like it's still possible to, you know, blow up and you just have to do it consistently. Mm -hmm. And that's the biggest thing. Like I said, I started waking up and planning videos and like I would post every day. I'm like, not consistent. Three that's to five thing. times a day. Yeah, yeah, you got to. And then I would go live like at least once a week. And mm -hmm. but I was posting. Yeah. Every day, and sometimes it would be follow-up videos of what something was that happened before. Uh -huh. so it was like, like part one, two, three. Come back. All right. So I remember how I said I was. Doing it. <laughs> yeah. I actually did it, did it. Uh -huh. and people would be like, "Oh wow!" Or sometimes people would even comment, "Let us know how it went," or uh -huh. something like that. Yeah, you need that. And so, you need them to come back. But once I took that little hiatus, nah. <laughs> Hiatus? What, like a social media break? I just stopped posting it as much. Oh, um, gotcha. Yeah, life, life. Yeah. I get it, um, yeah. I've kind of taken a halt on like my songwriting because I've been I've been working like two jobs, like school full time, um, doing a lot of performing, so I haven't had time to like sit down, lock in with songwriting or studio. But this year I'm hoping to. Uh, did you guys hear that though? She said two jobs and school. <laughs> yeah. And making music? Yeah. Thank you. What do you want school for? Psychology. I okay. want to be a psychedelic Ooh. assisted psychotherapist. Okay. Yeah. Is that big? Yeah. No, because psychedelics are 
they're being decriminalized right now. Yeah. So they're kind of in the same stage that marijuana was, and now there's dispensaries and all that. So by the time I, uh, so I'm about to graduate in May, and then get my master's. So by the time all that happens, you're about to have your master's. Yeah, another two years. Thank you. So by then, hopefully, it should be more established and right. legalized. I mean, if they have a curriculum for it, you feel me? Uh, it's just. <laughs> Oh, they don't? I gotta go like out of the country to oh, <laughs> do wow, that. Really? Or like the Bay Area or Oregon, you know, places where it is kind of legal. Yeah. All right. Yeah. But that's why you started in psychology, so you just have the background and understanding people. And exactly. Yeah. Right. I want to still help uh, use it for therapy purposes. I feel like this question is unnecessary, but <laughs> you take psychedelics. <laughs> <laughs> Depends on who's asking. I mean, I'm not the cops or your parents. Cut the cameras. <laughs> you know, I I dabbled. I wouldn't recommend something to people that like I haven't tried. Right. Yeah. So I've had good experiences, and I feel like I can help guide people on the right path to use them for positive benefits and not for harm or abusive things. So yeah, I think I can help. Society like destigmatize their thoughts around magic mushrooms <laughs> and help people where they have treatment resistant symptoms like um, antidepressants won't help them anymore, or like regular therapy won't help them. Maybe some shrooms will. <laughs> right, that's right, actually. So, is yeah. shrooms more so that you're leaning towards as being a medicine? Yeah, I mean, one of my two jobs was working at a dispensary. So I'm just all about, you know, herbs as medicine and kind of that spiritual and holistic healing route. Oh, for sure, for sure. Yeah. Uh, I don't know, though, if, like, the decriminalization, <laughs> not in a bad way, is going to emphasize, like, the healing aspect of it. Yeah. I feel like so many people are just going to be like, oh, man, and just go take it and eat it and just start having fun Not, no, exactly yeah. that's what my job is supposed to be here for um but i guess if i were to do it in the cl the clinical route it would be kind of like microdosing in increments yeah. and i would have to like have sessions with them before and after help right. them debrief their feelings and find people <laughs> i feel like they even have to screen people which is kind of hard because you feel like some people are gonna sign it's up for it thinking they're going to get free psychedelics. <laughs> you feel me? Yeah. Or they're going to get free psychedelics mm -hmm. and be prescribed them, and the yeah. prescription is just gonna be gone. Like, <laughs> and not follow my guidelines. Yeah. <laughs> it's like micro dose. Maybe. I'm trying to see the universe. Like, <laughs> okay, allegedly, this is round one. <laughs> Test patch. <laughs> You're like, I had a friend once. He said he tripped enough acid to die. And he had depression before he did it. Uh, now, like, you feel me? Are there yeah. stories of people who like you did crazy amounts of something, uh -huh. or like were haven't... sick and ailments and stuff? Yeah. yeah, I haven't heard stories of people like, you know, going that far on psychedelics. Yeah. So. No, I mean I'm gonna say it happens on purpose, mm -hmm. but somebody will say yeah. like it's legal now. I heard a story of somebody that I want to try. Mm -hmm. It was like. Mm -hmm. I don't know. People are weird. People, people, people. Yeah, we gotta educate. We'll educate the people how to use it properly. And also, I just remember like when I first was introduced to shrooms and like just psychedelics, mm -hmm. I know people who would do them. I would say when I went to college, I met a kid who tripped on shrooms for over a week straight. Yeah. <laughs> that is a long time. That's excessive. There's another kid who did acid. For like four days. Yeah, that'll like fry your brain. And was ready to do it as soon as he could get his hands on more. And so just knowing that people like that exist, Blue not music. only in teenage states, mm -hmm. is why I'm like, I don't know if decriminalization is necessarily going to emphasize the healing aspect of it, but it yeah. will get rid of some stigma. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Same thing with weed too. Not not everyone uses it to like elevate their mind, stay, and you know pour it into creativity. Some people use it just to fucking knock out or forget about yeah. the world and escape. Like not people escapism. use it for different, mm -hmm, for yeah. different manners but through therapy i'm hoping to help them use it to like break negative thinking patterns and you know good habits well what are some things outside of psychedelics that you feel like help with breaking negative thought patterns i know mindfulness meditation you know all that does journaling um i don't incorporate in my everyday life as often as i know i should yeah. but you know 
I do explore all those things being a psychology major. We all do assignments on it and stuff to track our emotions throughout the day. Oh, yeah. yeah. And I just ask because I feel like mindfulness is one thing, meditation is something else, and just like everybody has negative thought patterns but not everybody is one familiar with those terms or two even if you do know what meditating is i don't know how to do it you feel me <laughs> yeah and so that's why i ask and it's just like do you meditate like you know not all the time or no, every day. I try, yeah i have before but i don't consistently as like my boyfriend he'll do it right when he rises yeah during the middle of the day right yeah. before he goes to bed yeah. i'll do it when i feel like i really need to cleanse my energy or before a shrimp strip or something oh yeah well, yeah snaps to him because i don't meditate as much as i should either so i don't feel like i feel like your approach to it is kind of like ah you feel bad about it don't you feel yeah, me because it will it's where you are a, a it's habit. like yeah. mindfulness it's part of my lifestyle. and even mindfulness is meditation this yeah. is just, uh i don't remember what it was but i was reading it and i had a teacher who was just like M -m meditation is a way of life and a way of being it's not necessarily just something that you do mm -hmm. and that you can approach all aspects of your life with mindfulness and as if it were a meditation yeah. and that's part of what like monks work towards anyway and just having that state of, of just zen exactly. and flow yeah. and so having that in mind sometimes it's like i'll just do something simple mm -hmm. and i'll say oh be mindful and i'll just bring my attention to how i'm holding my arms if i'm reaching for this or if i'm purposefully picking it up you mm -hmm. feel me and so it's just like that can be a meditation in itself and so it's just how do you explain using that to break your negative thought patterns it's like in order to break the negative thought pattern first you just have to be mindful yeah. and aware of where you are and how you're using exactly. the tools you have whether it's your hand to pick something up or the words out your mouth to convey your message so exactly perfectly said beautiful <laughs> <laughs> oh thank you yeah <laughs> Uh, when you do meditate, what's one of the things that like throws you the most or like one of your biggest challenges? It's just being still for so long. Like I got back problems yeah. lucky, so I need to like stretch, you know, no, like yeah. sometimes I get uncomfortable. I can't always I gotta really focus on keeping my posture straight, yeah. stuff like that. Do you like, meditate yeah, sitting up or do you lay down? I prefer to lay because yeah. when I sit I overthink about all those things and when I lay I just lay, you know? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I try to just um worry about my body as least as possible and then my mind will definitely start to wander and no, yeah. yeah i was listening to something the other day and it was just saying like part of meditating is that reminding yourself to not think about it you're, <laughs> you're outside so much yeah because it's letting you train that muscle you know life is the same way like you don't meditate any amount of time and never get mad again <laughs> You feel me? So it's like, why do you expect to meditate and never get, you know, thrown by yourself or outside? It's a matter of being able to, to recenter yourself. Exactly. Your thoughts pull it back in. So it's like the beginning stages are actually the best because you're learning what that muscle even is. Yeah. But, uh, it makes you a lot more conscious of your body and like yeah. how you're sitting and what parts of yourself make contact with your surroundings. Oh, yeah. Sometimes you find out what parts of your body hurt. Hurt, yeah. You're like, oh snap, I didn't even you realize. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but right. no, meditating, it could be fun and it could be funny sometimes, uh -huh. yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my friends will ask me too. They're like, how do you meditate? And I'll begin to explain it to them, but then I feel like the simplicity of it too kind of gets people because they're like, what? Like, that's it? Mm -hmm. like, yeah, just breathe and don't think about anything, you know? Oh, yeah. And see, one thing I appreciate that my teachers told us, it's, it, okay. yeah, it's fine. Okay. Uh, my teachers always told us, or at least one of them, would just say, focus on your breathing. Mm -hmm. Just focus on your breath. Just yeah. Breathe slowly in and out. If your mind wanders, let it wander, but don't let it leave this room. If you leave the room, come back. You feel me? <laughs> and so it got to a point after a while where it's like, all right. Your teacher, you said? Yeah. What class or <laughs> when? Oh, uh, when I was training for acting, when I was training oh. to be an actor, we had to do uh, movement classes and movement training. Mm -hmm. And part of that was deconstructing the body and uh, centering the mind. And so yoga, and meditation mm -hmm. is the first thing that our movement teacher taught us before we even started moving our body. Because she said before you can learn how to use your body, you have to learn how to be in your body. 
and to learn how to be in your body first you have to align your body so it can work the way it's supposed to and not the way you've been using it for the last 20 years of your life yeah. and then alongside with that is tapping into the emotional side of stuff and tapping into your own emotion mm -hmm. but being able to slow your mind enough to actually understand what's going on yeah and from there we will use that to like do muscle memory and so like say you have a piece where you have to cry right and it's something tragic in our movement class we would find what that felt like wow so when we go to act it we really put connect the in that emotions physical with state. the muscles yeah mm -hmm. or even that like posture like say i get angry and now my chest is out of my head it's high <laughs> yeah that now when I'm in a scene where I'm getting angry, instead of just using my voice and trying to sound mad, I know when I get mad, this is what I do. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to do this mm -hmm. and let the words come out normally. Yeah. Nice. So yeah, it was very interesting. Useful they were lessons. So useful. I know people in the class who hate it. Like, we didn't want to meditate for an hour. Like, what yeah. are we doing? Mm -hmm. I, it yeah, not everyone action. takes the same stuff out of it, but, but it's good that you were able to take it and apply it to your outside life too. No, 100%. Reach the benefits, yeah. I feel like that's part of the artist's job, though. You feel me? It's mm -hmm. to take things from life and turn it into something. Um, mm -hmm. uh, what, I know you have an experience you turned into a song. Yeah, all my songs are based off of experience. Um, no rap cap in my music. <laughs> no, I keep that a honey at all times. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> When you go to write, do you look for your stuff outside your life to draw from, or do you just let it flow? Um, it can be like, kind of like hypothetical, like not necessarily, oh, this is something in my past with this specific person, but it's just kind of like, in general, this is what I want, or this is what I would avoid, or this is what I aspire for, you know? Yeah, something like that. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, do you ever use specifics? Yeah, <laughs> there were a few songs where I'm like, fuck this, I've been through some shit, blah, blah, blah. I talk to my shit, and I'm like, yeah, they're going to hear it, and they're going to be torn, <laughs> but get my streams up. Did you say enough to let them know who it was about, or did you keep it a little, you know? Yeah, like, street? if you know, you know, but also I always say, like, if the shoe fits, because, right. yeah. yeah, a lot of my songs are pretty general. <laughs> no, yeah, there's stuff that I've written, and I'll just be like... I wonder what they're going to think when they hear this. <laughs> Which one is going to... You feel me? Like, it's not even necessarily about you, but... Yeah. No, yeah. I feel like that's funny. If it makes you feel something, that's all that matters. No, yeah. I'm like, damn. I'm sorry that you thought that way. <laughs> I, I didn't uh, think that about you, yeah, but... Yeah, but keep streaming. No, yeah. <laughs> oh, what's your uh, most streamed song today? Last time. Last time. My first, my debut single on that one was about a breakup. That oh. kind of propelled me as my well, songwriting. <laughs> Here, here's yeah. a shot for last time. <laughs> last time. Unfortunately, this won't be the last time we take yeah. shots. Oh, you said it propelled you into your songwriting. How so? Because the breakup happened December of 2020. And by the end of that December was when I got into songwriting. And um, I don't, it's not like. It was like, oh, I went through a breakup, so I'm gonna take my feelings out and songwrite. It was just more like, the breakup just so happened. My music friend just so happened to hit me up, and I just so happened to start my music this career. Was your head. Yeah, yeah, I just aligned that way, um, and it did become a creative outlet for me. Like, I was never a poetic person. I don't really like to write much, but I always had a musical background with like singing and instruments, so. When my friend's Logic <laughs> Logic Pro trial expired, he's like, hey, can I use your MacBook? I was like, sure. And he's like, wait, you sing too. Like, hop on this chorus. So I did, and it was good. So I just kept songwriting after that. Yeah, you still got Logic? I do. You That's the it? only one I use, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's dope. That's not something coming together like that. It's mm -hmm. like so many artists struggle with trying to get, get somewhere started. to record. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So after that one song, you kept recording? Yeah, but I would mostly just, I didn't have like proper equipment or like a proper acoustics for a home studio. Yeah. So I would just use it to songwrite, get my drafts, and then once I finish, I'll bring that to a real studio. No, yeah. Yeah. And see, that's what I did for a while, and I didn't even go as far as recording once I really wanted to like lock in. Mm -hmm. I would just sit in my room and like rap it over and over after I wrote yeah. it and just like perform it, practice, 
and then I would go to the real studio with it and record it. Yeah. And I don't think now I do sometimes take stuff that I record at home to the studio. Yeah. But I don't think before I had like went and got my first project all pressed out. I don't think I ever took any of my recordings to the studio. You know, like any Dang. songs I ever recorded, everything yeah. was like unever heard. <laughs> like I wonder why yeah. I did that. It'd be like that for me too, like but I have to hear how I lay it out to hear if I even like the song yeah. to hear where I should put ad libs and doubles and harmonies. So nah, it yeah. saves so much time if you can do it before you get to the studio. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Actually there is one time though where I thought I didn't like it. Uh -huh. Just because it sounded so much different, like through the studio. Yeah, and that's like, that's him all the time too. <laughs> <laughs> but I was like, bro, is it me or is it the song? Like, yeah, he always asks me because I have an ear for that stuff. I'm like, oh, like they just mixed your vocals differently. <laughs> yeah, like, you just sound different than you're used to. Yeah, yeah. Different equipment. Sometimes they put effects on it. Yeah. Do you always go to the same studio? No, um, I do have like two engineers it's home studios and i go to them the most because i like trust them the most yeah. but i've met a whole bunch of people and like other artists that want me as a feature i'll record at their studio yeah. so i branch out but i still have my my ogs <laughs> nah, I hear you. yeah i just asked because i once i did go to a couple of different studios i know people but like, nah, I got it. and i was like bro as long as it's quality if i can hear a few things before i go I want to see what you sound like with me or like yeah. I've just picked up things whether it's from being in the studio behind the engineer mm -hmm. and like learning something he did or just being in the vocal booth and he says do this or try this yeah and it's like all right bet I can add that to my tool belt now that's exactly. one reason I love going to different engineers because mm -hmm. like they can good. teach you something different yeah. they have different styles yeah. yeah you're gonna walk away with something yeah so nice. but streaming platform do you prefer and you said that spotify spotify yeah i don't know why actually i think i just started with that in like middle school and kept with it you know they got like the little student discount and stuff <laughs> <laughs> i'm spilling this so i'm terrible oh it's all right but no that's crazy you said it came out in middle school for you yeah <laughs> i was in college oh my god i used a young wolf like that <laughs> That's yeah. crazy. Shots to time. <laughs> Shots to time, Cassie. Woo! Cheers. Oh, when you first dropped a song on Spotify, did you listen to it a million and five times? Yes. <clears throat> I listened to it a million times before I dropped it, and then maybe like a hundred thousand after. <laughs> oh, yeah. I remember yeah. I was like, bro, I'm gonna put this in a playlist. <laughs> I'm about to keep it on repeat. Mm -hmm. I'm getting my streams up. <laughs> I always wondered that. I'm like, if I listen to my own song, does, does it, it count? Us? I don't know. Well, the thing is, they don't know it's you. You <laughs> feel me? But they do they look at like the users and the time and yeah. stuff like that. And like, if there's a playlist and mm -hmm. it, yeah. So yeah. It, and even if you get a million of them boys, you get like 25 bucks. You feel me? You're not, you're not Justin Bieber, bro. You're yeah. not him. Like, it's a nice little accolade. Uh -huh. I can't, a million streams is nice. I'm yeah. Like, give me them in any given mm -hmm. day. But I'm not going to cheer, it. like, unless there's a million on YouTube, Spotify, uh -huh, Apple, across the whole board, <laughs> getting you, like, sold out shows, <laughs> like, merch sales. This, we could work with this for a year at least. <laughs> yeah. oh. a whole lot that goes into it. So are you primarily an actor and, like, music on the side? Or you just do it all? Just an entertainer? Um, yeah, I do what feels right in the moment. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Um, Sometimes I'll act for a week and drop two songs in that same week. Nice. Oh yeah, I make music whenever, whenever I want to because mm -hmm. I, I engineer myself. That's the best way to do it. Yeah. You shouldn't have to force it. And I've been recording for forever, so it's like I can't put music down. Mm -hmm. And then when it comes to acting, I spent four years learning the craft. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to tap out. Yeah. So when it comes to like how hard I chase either, I don't... You know what like I mean? Like I put my music out when it's time, when it's ready, and I work when you feel me. I feel like I should. Yeah. And when it comes to acting, sometimes I'm hands on with it. Other times I leave that to my management, and I wait for my you feel me? Yeah. My time. Mm -hmm. so I put in the work. I've been rapping for over ten years, Dang. and I've been acting for probably close to the same. 
So I'm yes. not really tripping or stressed on any of it. Yeah. I'm just waiting for it. You feel me? It's a happen. Yeah. yeah it'll it's happen, like yeah. there's so much that I can do with the means that I have. Mm -hmm. And I do it all. <laughs> I yeah, took the best that I can. Mm -hmm. So at this point, I can't say I'm an actor or a rapper. I'm an artist. I'm a creative. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I just do what feels right when it's time. Yeah, I feel that. Yeah. Nice. I feel like the starting point can be so much more simple than a lot of us make it as people who want to do things, period. And I just say people who want to do things, period, because I almost say creatives. But the same holds true for being a financial investor, being a real estate investor, like all of those things start when you say they start whenever you start acquiring the knowledge this is just to give people the background on other people doing it mm -hmm. and black rap is so much more simple than you thought <laughs> yeah start. yeah exactly that's that's the hardest part just getting started that's how i feel for like producing and engineering because i aside from just being a singer songwriter or like instrument player i want to learn how to produce beats and yeah. learn how to mix vocals so that i don't have to go to other people's studios, like pay someone else to do it. And I want to help mix other people's stuff too. So eventually I'll branch out, but it's literally like, I have my interface now, I have Logic, I have a laptop I can use. It's just a matter of me sitting down to get started. No, yeah. yeah, that's the hardest part for no, me. No, sometimes that's the hardest part mm -hmm. is like, I technically know how to make beats. Exactly. Just I have a sitting meeting. down to do it. Oh, so like the little synth the key, thing? Yeah, and, uh, I got a little key, yeah, got my little pads, <laughs> pads uh, yeah. yeah. Oh, and uh, it's literally haven't been plugged up to a computer in two years. <laughs> yeah, that's and me with my piano too. I haven't taken the time. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so, but at the same time, I feel like you have to learn. You don't have to do it all. Mm -hmm. And even if you do end up doing it, you don't have to rush yourself to do it. Yeah. You have two jobs. <laughs> yeah. And you're in school. Mm -hmm. And you just performed yesterday? Yeah, just yeah. three days ago. And you just came here to do this? Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. You know, you feel me? It's like grace. You got to give yourself grace with the process. Yeah, definitely. And I feel like as creatives, sometimes you have to be hands on so much mm -hmm. to one, do it, but then two, to show people, and then three, to get the project oh, actually finished. Uh -huh. That you feel like you have to do everything you're thinking of as soon as you're thinking of it yeah being an indie artist you, you gotta do it all yourself you do mm -hmm. but you don't <laughs> at one time yeah yeah but have you produced no i get all my beats from like other producers <laughs> yeah no shame in that not yeah. everybody look mm -hmm. whitney houston doesn't write songs like at all no oh wow like, I knew Rihanna, like, didn't write all her songs, and I was pretty heartbroken about that, but... No. It, it's just now becoming an expected standard that all performing artists are also writers. Mm. And the only reason that's becoming something is because, one, music is so... I won't say easy, but it's so easily accessible to make something, mm -hmm. and then... They want that authenticity and the artist to be all well-rounded. And not even just that. And... Not even just that. <laughs> From a label's perspective, mm -hmm. it's easier. We don't, have to pay anybody. One, yeah. we don't have to pay anybody to do this. <laughs> you feel me? Yeah. And That's where I heard a lot of the money in the industry comes from too, the ghostwriters. What do you think your genre is? Mostly R&B. R&B? Yeah. Clean R&B? Yeah, I, I try to do a little bit of like hip-hop, EDM, pop, Afrobeats, dancehall. It's just all in the vault right now. I like um, house music, like a lot of EDM stuff, but a lot of those are my features. So it just honestly depends on like what beat I find or <laughs> whenever I get it out. But I got a lot in the works right now. Not yet. Mm -hmm. just... That actually happened, one of my producer friends, he um, posted his beats on YouTube and one of his beats got stolen. Guess by who? Hmm. The Migos. Their Peekaboo song. I don't know how it goes. Peekaboo, Peekaboo, maybe. <laughs> yeah, I heard it, I heard it. yeah I heard it. but that, my friend Brian produced it. He showed me his YouTube video. He's like, this is it. Took the whole thing, removed his tag, whatever. And, or just like, literally, I guess their producer remade it themselves. So yeah. not like they downloaded it from YouTube. Right, 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 right. And then they just pitched his sample down. So yeah. Brian's sample was like high pitched. Theirs was low pitched. And it like was literally the same thing though. No. And he didn't know back then like, oh, I should get licensed like this and that. So people to protect himself. Yeah. He just posted it and now it's stolen. <laughs> no. And I mean, I feel like that's something that 
they don't tell us when you start making music and most artists don't even know how to do it even if they know they should mm -hmm. is license your music license yeah i still have yet to do that like the what bmi whatever bmi or ascap yeah, yeah i haven't done that yet you're publishing and licensing <laughs> yeah and then also um you can file for copyright Mm. And then you feel me. Yeah, I, at the same time, it's just depending on like what level the song is on. Yeah, it's like, you can, like if it's getting played in stores and stuff like or that. Not even it's that like, or... did you make sure you own the masters, mm. everything? You feel me? Are you performing it? Are you putting it out? Mm. And are you promoting it? Because like if it's something where I don't one hundred percent own all the rights to the song, mm -hmm. I'm not even stressed about putting it on my BMR yeah. or ASCAP. Mm -hmm. But I'm about to put this shit out and see if it go viral. <laughs> And I feel like yeah. that's such a weird thing to say with like thinking about industry mm -hmm. and like rights to stuff. We said yeah. I'm about to just put it out and see how it go. But uh, there was something that I just was looking at and it was like, why are you worried about what's about to happen with the song? In order for it to really matter, you got to do something big. Mm -hmm. And if this blow up, bro, if this song go number one and I make a million off of it. I have no problem giving the producer a cut, bro. Yeah. So I've stopped thinking about it because it's like, bro, I'm not Kanye. They're not about to sue me for a million dollars. <laughs> you not get, you want my mic? Like, you want my mic, bro? <laughs> I get you. Oh. Uh huh. They got bigger shit to worry about. <laughs> like, that's why we said just put it out. Yeah. And if you're getting it off of YouTube, who cares? Yeah. It's like, it's music. Mm hmm. And at the end of the day, good music is what people really want. Yeah, right now, like, sometimes I'll have producers sending me stuff. Like, um, a lot of my producer friends, you know, they're busy on their own artists growing. So I won't be like, make me some beats. But, like, sometimes the Instagram um, producers that send me stuff, I'm just kind of like, damn, like, did you even listen to my music? Like, none of these are even, they're like, yo, I got a beat pack for you. And I'm like, wow, like. Nah, people just be trying to send their beats Seller out to get shit. people to use exactly. it. Exactly. Or they get you to use it and then say buy it. Yeah, they're like, oh yeah, I got some beats for you. And they're like, oh yeah, um, check my website out. You know, stuff like that. I'm like, ah. Uh. This is what I hate. When they email you a beat that's like a minute. Oh, it's just a little snippet, a little pre I'm like, bro, I literally told, I, I've told at least three producers who did. I was like, bro, do not send me nothing again. <laughs> If it's less than, he was like, you could just loop it twice. You the producer, bruh. <laughs> what are you supposed to do? You made the beat, bruh. Yeah. Yes, I can just loop it. But, like, give me a beat. Don't give me a loop. Don't give me a little sample. Like, you don't know if I have a studio. You don't know if I engineer. You don't know yeah. what's going on. You might not even have a dog. You can just be playing that shit for my message. Yeah. Well, what if I just got inspired and I want to write now? You just yeah. sent me a 30-second ride in, bro. And 40 seconds of B. Yeah. It don't even and got you a switch up. Three minutes uh, of it. Yeah, no. Nah, that's the what I hate the most is yeah. when they just said poopy. <laughs> Not even poopy, just short. But I heard you saying when they said stuff that totally don't sound like you. But no, they didn't. They probably didn't <laughs> yeah. listen to your. They said, oh, exactly. recording artist? Uh huh. Do you mean I can get some shout out for her. Just check my shit out. Right. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but well, we still appreciate it. We uh -huh. still love it. A lot of free beats to the email. A lot of free beats to the email. Even if you tell me I gotta buy it, I love the free beats to the email. And keep it up. Uh, I'll go to YouTube. Yeah, yeah. But this is the one thing I did learn about YouTube though, mm -hmm. is if it has more than 30,000, 50,000 views, other people are gonna be using that. I won't use it. Yeah, you gotta be in the few thousands. <laughs> yeah, I'll literally I'll look for a producer with three hundred and fifty one subscribers, and <laughs> his last so beat got one hundred and forty eight plays. Yeah. And all that, I'm going. Like, yeah, no one's found this you yet. You feel uh -huh. me? Un Digging for yeah, gold. Uncover gems. Yeah. And that's the one thing that I will say if you are looking on YouTube. Bro, if you just type in, it got 2.5 million views. Like, and now you gotta scroll to the bottom. Week. I'm like, bro, this came out four days. Mm -mm. Yeah. Not run. Uh -huh. and that's go on page you know. like six of YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> go, go deep through the catalog. Yeah. But uh, when I first moved to the West Coast, I'm from Ohio. Yeah. I met somebody who had the same beat as me at least two, three times. Oh or somebody gosh. would listen to my song and be like, like oh, I know. I was like, like Nah, never, mm, cat, yeah. cat, never again. And another thing, I'll look for people who are actually selling beats on their store, mm -hmm. and I'll see if I can buy a lease or a license to it. Yeah. Yeah. Or I'll like decide. Like the exclusive, unlimited. Yeah. Thing. Or I'll just put it in my head, like I just said. It doesn't matter because I'm not planning on making this. The <laughs> yeah. once. I don't know, it just gets real weird. <laughs> yeah. It's like, 
the probably like 2020, 2021, it was becoming a problem where labels were buying the exclusive rights for songs that were dropped without them because they had potential or they were going viral. Wow. Yeah. That's messed up. It's like so like, oh, <laughs> It's crazy to think. Yeah. But it's like, it's business. Uh-huh. I was like, that's wild. Yeah. This is Taking out the competition. <laughs> it's tough out here. Yeah. Know the business, know your no. rights, licensing, no. read contracts. Just was on here and he was talking about the importance of contracts. And I was, was like, it Leontay? Yeah. Yeah, I, so, we follow each other. Right, that, yeah, and I was like, even more than get a contract, <laughs> even more than write your contract, mm -hmm. know what it says. Mm -hmm. No, it's like perpetuity <laughs> means forever. If you ever see a contract that says perpetuity, it means forever. Really sit down and question whether or not the deal you're making and the people you're making it with you want to deal with for forever. That's the first thing I'm gonna tell anybody when he reading any type of contract. And anytime any percentage pops up, reiterate, double check what that percentage is for and what it's of. Is it for you or is it for you? <laughs> And is it coming from something I'm supplying or the music? Is it from the performance side of things? Or is it from the royalty side of things? Like the mechanical and the licensing. Mm -hmm. What is mechanical? What is the performance license? Like all of these are things that even if you're an entertainer, an actor, like they hold true to the music mm -hmm. too. It's like read your contract, Google, Wikipedia, ask your friend. Don't just sign stuff because it feels good or it sounds good yeah. or because you're building with somebody. Like it could be the person you're building and starting with and in there they write that they own everything. Mm -hmm. I just fuck you over just yeah. like that. But you already know. You ready. <laughs> you got her psych yeah. manager lined up. You know. Did you read the room? She read the people. Get my <laughs> Trust me, I'm a lawyer. <laughs> See. That's what I would have. I was thinking about going to law school. And my everyone's like, "Oh, you should be a therapist." My mom's like, "Oh, you should be a school counselor. Like, they get paid good. You'll be in the school system." You know, I'm like, "No, like, I don't want to do that." But now that I've been meeting some more wild friends, and they ask, they come to me for advice, and I have to try to like help them out. I'm like, you know what? Maybe I should get paid for this, and I am going down the therapist route. <laughs> Yeah. I just know whatever it is, I want to help people. You know, music therapy, you know. I was about to say, music helps people too. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, do you have any songs that you feel like inspired you or helped get you through hard times? I'd say Last Time and Stress Relief were when I were like really writing with my emotions. Kind of why you calling to. Um, but it was cool because one of my la my most recent performances, like last Thursday, I performed Stress Relief, which is the one I said, like, it's special to me. I don't get to perform it too often. And some dude came up to me after and he's like, yo, like, your song made my girlfriend cry. I was like, wow, thank you. Like, that's the first time I've really touched someone like that, aside from, like, my parents. But, like, I know that song spoke to her and I, I wrote that from the heart, too. So that meant a lot. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But what about other artists other than yourself? Uh, like, songs that spoke to me? Mm -hmm. Oh, Janae Aiko, definitely, all her music, um, Kehlani, her, SZA, all the female R&B artists, I resonate with them a lot. Do you feel like they inspire your music? Oh, definitely. It's in my Spotify bio, too. Like, people on radio interviews would be like, hey, I saw that so-and-so was your inspiration. I'm like, oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. For sure. Who's, like, your top three? Janae Aiko, her... And oh, <laughs> there's so many. I'll say Kehlani. I've been listening to Kehlani since middle school, elementary school too. Yeah, they all inspire me because they're very authentic and like it's not always. Well, they'll cover like the toxic side, but they'll also talk about like positive love, and then they'll also make some like music that you can bump at the club. You know, it's very versatile. Yeah. Bet, bet. Mm -hmm. Oh, what's your like favorite 
favorite like space to be in when you're getting ready to write? Like some people like when they feel moody. I'm about to write something. Deep. <laughs> other people like when they're just like happy and like I'm uh -huh. about to write something fun. Like when's your like I guess optimal mood to write in? Honestly, I'd say relax. Like when I have nothing to do, nothing to worry about. I know I can just smoke a fat blunt and you know be in the dark. Plug my headphones in, lock in for beats. Like you said, listen for an hour before yeah, you pick before I, Yeah, yeah, yeah I'll yeah. have like 20 tabs open and I'll like <laughs> narrow them down. And then right. I'll draft to all three of them. And like, that's my process. I like to be alone though. I feel like it's a different kind of pressure when I'm like writing with someone else. And I'm kind of shy to always like sing it. Like I said, I have to record it so I can hear how it yeah. sounds. So it's kind of, maybe it's different as a songwriter because there's melodies involved. But yeah. rappers, once you find your flow, you just stick to it. You rhyme in your notes and you're kind of good. You know what I mean? Oh, no. Nah, my process is sometimes just like that. Yeah. I don't necessarily draft three anymore. Mm -hmm. I used to. I start writing and go back to it or start writing, go to something different. But get kind of like, man, I don't know. Yeah. And, but at the same time, I, I try to do... I have a lot of music that's not released that doesn't sound like anything I've ever released. Mm -hmm. And so when it comes to stuff like that, I have the same thing where it's like, I'd much rather nobody be here because I don't really know what this is about to sound like. <laughs> but yeah. it's also me more so trying to tap into a singer side of myself than a rapper. Mm -hmm. So yeah, not 100%. Be more experimental. Yeah, exactly. Like I try different things out of my comfort zone if I'm alone, but yeah. if I'm around someone else, I kind of stick to what I'm comfortable with, what I know yeah. will probably sound good. Yeah, I've been getting more comfortable with just doing whatever I feel needed needs to be done mm -hmm. just because I've recorded at home for so long mm -hmm. and most of the people who are in the space with me when I am recording already have heard me mm -hmm. and like you feel me they have that oh he's hard <laughs> so I was like all right look just just experiment throw everything yeah. you hear out the window uh -huh. and wait until I play it yeah something will stick <laughs> <laughs> right. they'll then, let you know if they fuck with it too no it pushes you mm -hmm. to write better or like write yeah. something you know what I mean? Yeah, it depends because everyone's writing process is kind of different. Like, yeah. I've been in studios where people are like, just write whatever because you're a singer, it'll sound good as long as it's a catchy tune. They don't care what the fuck you're saying. But then, me being like a songwriter, I'm like, no, like, I care what I sing right. about. I know I can sing good, I can sound good, but I. I want it to, I want to resonate. Yeah, yeah, I want them to hear me. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. Like, ah, whatever you say will sound good. Yeah, they're like, just give me a catchy hook. I'm like, I can give you maybe some bars. <laughs> I'll try. <laughs> that's funny. Yeah. What's the longest you think you've ever took on writing one song? Oh man, I still have songs in the drafts for. Cause I, my you process, plan on finishing those? Yeah, I want to by summer. Um, but my process is that I will go and. I don't freestyle words, I like freestyle melodies, so yeah. I'll just hum and stuff, and then I'll plug in rhyme schemes and then plug in lyrics. So it's like a multi-step process for me when it comes to song, like um, maybe in January I'll record the melodies, and then maybe in March I'll revisit and be like, oh yeah, I'll rhyme here, 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 and then in June I'll be like, okay, I'll plug in actual words and worry about cover art and all that stuff. So yeah, exactly, it depends for me, especially since I have a lot going on, like shit <laughs> with school and everything it drains a lot out of me and i don't have much time to like be creative it sucks the juices out of you no, I hear you. yeah I hear you. but no i commend the fact that you stick with the song that long yeah it's, like, it's easy sometimes i to, sit on it yeah, yeah it's like eh, whatever mm -hmm. you know I'll, I'll do something different or i don't even like it mm -hmm. like so the fact that you like nah revisit this it is yeah one of those ones. Like, i'm gonna finish this exactly yeah, yeah. Oh, you're a junior or senior in school? Senior. I have one semester left. All right, bet. Yeah. And so when did you start making music? Like, how old or how long ago? It was right before my first semester of college. For real? Yeah. All right. Yeah. Or oh, actually, so, okay, okay, I graduated June of 2020. I started my semester of college August 2020 and then songwriting in December. So it was my first semester of college, right. winter break. Yeah, I had nothing better to do. <laughs> so I was like, fuck it, I'll try this. And it worked out. I actually met, I was going snowboarding in March and then I met some producers, like EDM producers, my friend Oliver, and he's one of my OG engineers I was mentioning. Um, he helped me get my debut single out. I have a song with him and I just trust him when it comes to mixing. Yeah, let's do Am I getting red? 
Yeah. My face red? Yeah. I can't drink anymore. <laughs> I get Asian glow. <laughs> like, is it the light? I don't know. No, it's not the light. It's just me. Have you heard of Asian glow? No. Yeah, um, Asians, we're literally allergic to alcohol. Like, we don't have the fucking, like, enzymes or whatever to break it down. How though? So many Asians be getting lit lit. <laughs> they get red, too. I never realized. <laughs> yeah. I got this Korean homie. Me and him drink the same. What, the one that was just here? No, it's from my oh. childhood. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, they can hang. They just get they get Asian glow. Or I, my family. I wonder. Especially. Actually, now that I think about it, Tomato. I guess his face did turn a little pink. <laughs> it, was, it was winter time. Like I just figured it was he cold. Was cold. <laughs> <laughs> Next That's time funny. I see him, I'm gonna be like, all right, after drink number four, like, come here, let me look at you. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see your complexion before and after picture. Yeah, that's funny. I was just about to say another shot. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> all right you're saying that uh with music it's like a way of helping people kind of mm -hmm. um is that what you hope to do with your music yeah i always say i try to spread like love like positivity um just like make something real in my music because yeah. i feel like a lot of the stuff that i experience like the trials and tribulations and stuff a lot of people can hear that and know that like even though I am aspiring to promote healthy love, like I have been through toxic stuff too, and it's okay to talk about that stuff. And hopefully hearing my experiences, other people will be like, oh, like, I don't wanna go through that. Or they can hear it and be like, oh, like, yeah, I deserve better, you know? Yeah. Cause I kind of say it's like the same as when you proofread a paper and they say like you should read it out loud to really catch your mistakes kind of like a song too it doesn't really hit people what they're going through until mm -hmm. they hear drake's lyrics or you know mm -hmm. they hear Janae Axel somebody singing put it into words exactly them. they're like damn that really hits you know yeah. and then they realize it'll spark something yeah. yeah or for people who aren't you know wordsmiths or like <laughs> interested or good yeah. with words like you're like people will send somebody a song and opposed to as opposed to verbalizing because mm -hmm, exactly. they don't know how to find the words yeah it's so a love language that, that medium yeah you know, you me? but exactly like, i'm gonna channel this message for you <laughs> <laughs> exactly no i got you i got you mm -hmm. uh there's a, um i believe it was a writer it might have been shakespeare mm -hmm. said that the artist's job is to hold a mirror to life Essentially, uh, I probably butchered that. It's not an exact quote. <laughs> I get, I get this. <laughs> it's not an exact quote. I get you. But he was saying the artist's job was to mirror your life back. So, I guess that's what you're doing. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right. Thank you, everybody, for tapping into today's episode. Again, special thanks to our guests, MLE. Yes, thank you for having me. Oh, of course. Um, and shout out to our sponsors, Sake High. Female owned brand. <laughs> God's favorite jewels for providing yes. you know, our wrist wear. Thank you. And thank you to the viewers for tapping in. Yeah. Stay tuned for the next one. Mm -hmm. And we can just talk. Okay. Uh, if you guys are ready <laughs> to go, just... you can go. Check out um, my music <laughs> on all major platforms under MLE, three letters, MLE, and my Instagram's at MOE underscore or official MLE music. <laughs>